Thank you very much. Let's allow a ribbon cutting by our MC. We will count up to one from ten backwards up to one. And then when you go to the uh, unveil of the plug, it will be five to one. Nine, ten. <laughs> Just to check out as well as you're on. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Start counting again. to read the plan for us. Over to you. Mapena Maths, Mathematics, Science and ICT School of Specialization with a focus on research and innovation was officially launched by Mr. Matome Chilwane, MEC for Education and Youth Development on the 17th of August 2023. Structure. Uh, it's hidden, therefore I cannot explain what it is. The only thing I can explain if you look down here, you can uh, see uh, some kind of a bascope, they call it a microscope. Uh, if you scan it, it will probably tell you what it is. But we're not going to allow you to scan it now. Hold your breath until the MEC of the Houting Education uh, Department, including youth, unveils this particular structure. MEC, over to you, sir. and as the group of grade 9, we decided to do a model of a larger microscope. Our microscope is big enough to be seen by everyone as they pass by the street. Our school is a school of maths, science, and ICT, and we focus on research and innovation. And a microscope is a very important part that includes most research. The uses of a microscope are biological research, medical diagnostics, and forensic. And as a school, we'll be using it mostly for biological reasons. Most of the learners do not know how microorganisms look like. So, we are going to take food waste from the school kitchen, dig it back to the soil to make compost. Microorganisms help in breaking down of the food waste. Then we will take the fertile soil, do it under a microscope to inform learners on how a microorganism looks like. If you are curious on how this microscope was made, it was made using bagla dots and paper mache, and we use cement to tighten it up. MEC, you are more than welcome to do this. Thank you very much. Yes, How old are you? Oh, I'm going to say that. Don't look like in the middle. Don't help me, I don't need this anymore. Don't look like in the middle, look left, right, and down. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. 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 Thank you very much. These you are our future scientists. You have talent here. <laughs> if uh, uh, you can scan the QR code below for more information. And thanks to our science teacher, Mrs. Levesi, this project was a success. <laughs> Uh, you want the mic one? Wow. Good day, MEC. Right here is a mural designed by our learners and painted by former matriculant Moscow. The mural displays different aspects of math, science, and ICT. It also portrays different sectors of innovation and research. I am Zwabo Dimpuma and these are my fellow speakers and presenters, Umpimete Maema and Queen Masuka. But before we move on, what is research and innovation, one might ask? Research is the study of material and sources to establish facts, while innovation is a creative idea with a beneficial outcome for the people. Over to you, Umpimete. I'm Science and ICT School of Specialization, and our focus is on research and innovation. The light bulb represents the light of our learner, 
and the microscope represent research and innovations, and the book represents knowledge is power. And there is our innovations. In past, they used input and further to write letters, progressing to typewriters, and now we are using computers for working games. And there is our boy wearing the VR gear. It provides the visual reality and it can be used during simulations and gaming. And there is our atomic structure. It shows the positive proton and neutral proton in the center and the negative electron which revolves around the center of the nucleus. Thank you. Wow. This is the DNA structure. <coughs> Life starts from the DNA level. We can also use DNA to test paternity. DNA's unique structure enables the molecule for itself during cell division. Meta Maths equations. These are the maths equations. We encounter many different equations in algebra, trigonometry, financial maths, calculus, and geometry. Science apparatus. These are the science apparatus that we use when we do our science experiments in the lab. We use our text tubes and beakers for mixing and measuring our chemicals. This is a rocket to launch satellite in space. So, Jabodi, can you please elaborate more about a rocket and a satellite? I think. Well, unlike an aeroplane, a rocket uses jet propulsion to accelerate without using the surrounding air, leading to it to be able to travel up across the horizon. A satellite is an object launched to space and often used for communication, navigation, global positioning systems, and etc. Well, right here is planet Satan. Satan is the sixth planet from the sun, and it's also known for its unique rings. Thank you all, and remarkably, Mr. MEC. I would like also to call Moscow to come over, the, the painter and the designer of this particular uh, We thank you. Good morning, MEC, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Amhelan Sishivedi, a proud grade 9 learner here in Mapenani and also a proud member of the RCL committee of the school. And today I am going to be your co-program director. As your co-program director, I would like to welcome you to our school, the new school of specialization. Mapenani Math Science and ICT School of Specialization with a focus on research and innovation. <laughs> As you know, uh, I'm, not going, I'm not working alone. I have our HOD of department, Mr. Rufus Mutwani and Mr. Vincent Johani, our sign language interpreter. Can we give them a round of applause? Now I would like to acknowledge the following people. Our MEC, Mr. Matome Chilwani, HOD, MPL's Education Chairperson, Councillor, Union Representatives, Nahau, Neptosa, Natu, Kosatu Chairperson and Secretary, Statu Chairperson and Secretary, GDE Agency CEOs, G DDGs, Chief Directors and District Directors, SOS Schools represented by Principal, SGB, Chairperson and RCL, 
school on training program represented by principals, chairpersons of SGBs and RCLs, including myself. Now, for the most special guest, we have Old Mutual Richfield Sefako Makato Health Science University, Optim Vele Midgood Twani University of Technology Learner Projects, Cyborn Discovery Center, the First National Bank, Blue, Fl Blue Sky Frontline, Itirelling School of the Blind. We also have Bokamuso Transport, Funda Africa, Professor Mamuheti Pageni, Ward Councillor Violet Palwani, alongside faith based organizations, Harangua Subs, SAPS, Principal of the Neighboring Primary and Secondary Schools, for their continued support, Department of Health, and Moscow Parents to the Community. Thank you. Those are the people I would have liked to acknowledge. Now moving on, we have the message of support by Professor Mamukheti, the top academic leader, professor in math education, and internationally acclaimed top researcher in education. And you're not gonna believe what I'm about to say. She is the sister of our HOD, Mr. Rufus Mutana. She's from our neighbor. She's from Zoom 2. Wow. <laughs> and for the record, her CV is so long that I can't read all of her achievements. Dimbelang, Sangonani, Lekai, Rite. It's a wonderful day today, and it's a wonderful day to be here celebrating. He says he can't read my achievements, and I'm happy with that, but there's one that I want to tell you about, because I want us to use it as a metaphor for what we need to do from here on. Those of you who do not know, three weeks ago, I summited Mount Kilimanjaro. Do you know Mount Kilimanjaro? Now, you might not be impressed, because you have no idea what Mount Kilimanjaro is. It's the highest mountain on the African continent and it's the highest freestanding mountain in the world. Right, now, if you don't get it, let me break it down. Right, you know Table Mountain, right? Okay, now imagine six Table Mountains on top of each other. That's how high it is. Oh, you're still not impressed. Oh, damn. Okay, now, the, the, imagine six table mountains on top of each other, and of course, going to, going up Kilimanjaro is a huge task. First of all, I didn't have to do it. Just like you learners do not have to do certain things. You do not have to stay up and do your maths every day, at least for an hour. You don't. You can easily sleep, you can easily say, I'm going to settle for 40% or 50%, I'll just scrape through as long as I have a meeting. There's a lot of things we do not have to do, but we choose to do them. Now here's the thing, I chose to, to, to go to Mount Kilimanjaro, despite the fact that I have my own PhD and two other doctorates for free from overseas, right? And I said, I'm going to kill it. But why? Why did I do that? Because I know if you want to change the world, if you want to do amazing things, if you want to solve problems of the world, you've got to be prepared to do hard things. And that's my motto. I do hard things. If it's easy, I don't want it. Right. And I wish all our young people could choose to do the hard things. Because without doing the hard things, the world and our country will remain what it is. Now imagine, Mount Kilimanjaro, there are two big challenges when you go up Mount Kilimanjaro. Anyone wants to take, wants to tell me what it is? The first challenge? Two big, anyone? Altitude, right? The altitude is a problem because the higher you go, the less oxygen. 
the less oxygen as you go up. And then you can have altitude sickness and you can die. Basically, you can't breathe. So just imagine running, you know, going all, all on a treadmill very fast. You know, when you do that and then you end up, and you can, if you do it now, you do that. You can do that as you go up Ban Kilimanjaro without running. And that's why when we go up Ban Kilimanjaro, we go slow because we try to manage the altitude. That's one of the things that keep them dangerous, right? Dangerous. Now, it's tough. Now, the second thing that kills people, I saw someone saying the weather. Because when you see Mount Kilimanjaro depicted in pictures, you'll see a white covering on top. That white covering is ice, glaciers. So when you go up, I went up and the ice is there. It's melting, of course, because of uh, um, uh, uh, environmental degradation, uh, degradation of our environment, right? But it's there. So it's freezing as you go up. So freezing that your fingers can freeze and your toes can freeze. So the second thing that kills people when you go Mount Kilimanjaro is hypothermia. Hypothermia, I hope the learners are getting it. Hypothermia, it's like, oh, well, I hope you're getting it. Right? Now, you, those are the two things that kill people. Strong people, fit people, people with money. Some people have died on Mount Kilimanjaro. But I went. And you can, you can stop. There are four places to summit. I can stop at the first and say I summited. I went to the top, and it's called Uhuru. I went up to Uhuru summit. Now here's the thing. There are so many things you can stop doing. Now today, I want to say to you young people, and even the teachers, anyone in the room, this country needs innovation, needs creative solutions, needs us to want to do hard things and to want to go to the top. If we're gonna settle for this, I mean, the reason why you are a school of specialization is because you are not stopping here. There are many summits. You are going to Uhuru. Now going to, to, to the top is tough. Now here's the thing, I get on to, we go as a team. We go in slow. It's 36 kilometers to go up. You go in slow, we spend four days. Only on the fourth day, we go up at night so that we summit at sunrise. Tough thing, man. As we're going, you remember, because it's so tough. I mean, you need to be fit, but you need to be healthy, blood pressure, oxygen, what? As we go up, you ask yourself, why am I doing this? I don't need to do this. The pressure, the pressure to stop, because you don't have to do it, is high. Now, I'm going to say to you, all of us in our lives, there are things that we can do, that can change the world, that can make our lives better, that can make the school better, that can make you obtain the best results, but you don't have to do them. And you can stop and say, it's tough, why am I doing this? Or you can even say, why am I the only one doing this? I don't wanna do it. And I want, you to, I want to say to you today, you should choose to do the hard things, even if you're the only one who's doing it. Do the hard things. The reason why we've got the kind of innovation that we have here in the world today, and some of it you're enjoying, is because someone chose to do the hard thing. Someone saw the people next to them not doing it, and they went on and did it. But doing the hard thing starts with just even being irritated with your toilet that it's not clean enough. Girls, I went to your toilet. I was like, damn. This is a school of innovation. This is a school of innovation. Now, you have to find solutions for your own problems. The only way the school of, of, this, of uh, 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 science and innovation is going to succeed is if you all adopt a curious attitude. When you see a problem, you don't get on and tell us about the problem. That's not what a school of science and technology focused on research innovation does. The school like this is a problem solving school. They see a problem in the school, they say, but how can we solve it? Whether that problem is a dirty toilet, whether that problem is whatever, whatever it is, you are organizing 
It doesn't mean it only has to be an app. It can be as, as something as long as it's problem solving. That's what research innovation is about. Now, the world is changing, as you know. We're getting intelligent machines that can do people's jobs. But the world is changing, and therefore it also comes with opportunities. And I'm going to say to you, you're very lucky learners because you go into school, you're growing at a time when knowledge is available. So you can teach yourself, you can learn how to code, even if your teacher doesn't teach you. Just go on the internet, you do one word, I am the code, I am the code, and you'll get that. You'll do the modules, you'll know how to code. Once you do the top module, it's free, by the way. I mean, these resources are free online. You can learn to code, you can do the coding, and you can end up developing an app without a degree in computer science. Without a degree in computer science. So be curious. Be curious. Look for problems that you can solve. Don't just unpack the problems. When you see a problem, find a solution. And I want to say to you, it is possible right here in Mapenani in Harangua. This township has produced a lot of leaders. So don't even think you have to go to a Model C school. I know when you see me standing here because you don't know me, you think I went to a Model C in Pretoria. No, I didn't. I went to school here. Go OD. Go OD. OD in zone 3. It changed the name now. It's no longer OD. I went to Ikakeleng in zone 2. Tela Tweu. Tebe OD. And then I did my Tik Mohibiron, a rural area. So it can happen right here. So grab the opportunities. Teachers, let's make this school rise. And let it be an exemplar of what research innovation is here. Principal, I'm here. I'm not the only one who's here. There's lots of scientists from here in Harankua. Um, anyone who's following me on the net will know that on Tuesday I ran a session on artificial intelligence and how Africa can lead. And I did it online with Professor Vugosi Marivate. Who's here? So for us, the Harangua boys and girls, held the line. And we're working with an organization in, the, in, in Switzerland, and we do, we're going to be doing another one on the 22nd. So I'm saying to you the knowledge is here. I do it online because I don't want it only to benefit Harangua kids, right? I want Africa to win. And in these sessions that I'm running, some young people will win an opportunity to travel with me to Switzerland in October. Last year, I took four of them. There was no one from Harangua. Shame! But I took four of them to Switzerland. And I'm going to say to you, be curious. Many adults say, get off social media, whatever. Here's the thing, get there, but get follow the right people. I mean, adults, when they were born, it wasn't here social media. But it's all right. No, 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 it's not possible. Everybody is there. Learners, what you do when you're there is to follow the right people. Because if you follow me, I will teach you about artificial intelligence, human augmentation, and how you get in. And we can do this, and we'll work with the school with I am the code, so that we can get more of our learners here. Coding, getting wise, and not waiting for someone from England to solve their problems. We can do it ourselves. Congratulations on the school. Thank you to the GDE for selecting Mapenani. Good choice, MEC. Good choice. Good choice, Gauteng. Good choice. Good choice. Good choice. I'm saying good choice because there are members of the community here. This is your school. This is your school. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. If you mess it up, you're messing the township. You're messing your area. So, you as members of the community have to take care of the school so that not only you but your children's children can also benefit from the school we are tired of communities that break down the schools that think that now that it's a science school they're going to take every gadget that is in the school i challenge you but please let's protect the school let's make sure it wins because if it succeeds we succeed, and our children's children will succeed. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Kate Edira Labor. Wabanaka Laurum and Oku in Sintle or at Lintuto or Trompilim Batradi, Lotum Pilishawa Saharo, Gigajalo, Oling, Lichwal, Moshev in Sabra Ralewa Kate. You know? If you've got a powerful sister like me, after she has spoken, you don't want to speak. <laughs> but because of my, my bureaucratic role as the department, head of the Department of Education and as a program director, I have to speak like that. Uh, and I just want to indicate to the MEC that uh, she said it, my penani is a good choice. When we launched this school early in the year, opening it as a, as a, as a revamp school, we promised them to say we are coming here to, 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 to declare this a school of specialization we are doing today. And I'm happy you got uh, my sister. Last time they wanted to bring her to Sway too when we were doing some SOS, I refused. I said, spare her for Harangu. And today she's in Harangu, I'm happy because she comes from here, she's plowing back. Uh, and I don't want to say a lot. When she was saying, uh, she, 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 she notified us that she's going to Kilimanjaro, I said, wow. Uh, I, I got scared, I got uh, uh, butterflies in my tongue because I won't dare going up Kilimanjaro because, but because she's a stronger, she's made of a stronger uh, mud and she's, she's more tenacious, she went for it and she succeeded. And thank you very much and congratulations. <laughs> With, without repeating your speech, I just want to say that indeed, you're right, uh, Prof, that hard things are painful. Uh, and it's painful to do hard things or difficult things. But as a society, and as my penan, as Harangu, as Department of Education in Gauteng, we need to enjoy, but also enjoy doing hard things. And I think your message has been well received by the learners, by the teachers, by the principal, by the parents, by the community, by the ruling party, and by all stakeholders present today, including unions and AGPs. Thank you very much. Probably you got surprised to say, why is my young program director calling professed? He was supposed to call me uh, what counselor me Violet Palwani, but I allowed him to do that. Because sometimes you need to allow people to, to, to do things their own way. Because we are equal program directors. I'm not senior to him, we're equal. You can even look at our height that we are the same. <laughs> He's a great nine learner, therefore I don't have to impose on him to say I'm at the attitude of the department, I've got this number of degrees, therefore move out of the mic and let's, what I said, let him do it the way he wants to do it. And let, let, let allow our kids to make mistakes because through mistakes, we learn. So I allowed him and, and, and the motivation from Prof was appropriate. But having said that, I'm talking about Prof and what can say about me, Violet Palwan. This month is a woman's month. We need to respect, celebrate, honor, and enjoy our women, our wives, our daughters, our sisters, our cousins, female cousins, etc. Therefore, not today. I'm enjoying my mother is still alive. I've got my sister here. I'm over the moon. Happy Women's Day. Women's Month. <laughs> On that particular note, I want to call Mepalwan. Mepalwan, you know her to not go malapeng. Before O Papa Ubu was a Nikitaba Lubua, maybe after prayer, I give it away and I can know. Eric Allah was my program director, but Udlora Mohelem, as a ward counselor, Yamona, yeah, a refill at home, and then from there, Roloka Lokohamo. I'm happy that you are here, and I'm happy that you are also a, a, a woman. Therefore, you'll see my, my program today is dominated by women. Uh, it's only me and Amukhelang and MEC probably who are, who are men and one or two from uh, Old Mutual, but otherwise it's uh, 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 females. Me, but I'm Thank you so much. Over to you. Ah! Mama Penani, ah la la! Hey, Kyalwona Karlitz, ke voice ya? Ya e politician, e akir. This is the voice of the politician. Alala, 
Yeah, no, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Program Director, HOD. Thank you so much. Uh, I greet you all, Program Directors. Uh, Honorable MEC, I greet you, all members of the community, all members from the political parties, different political parties, SAPS, um, Department of Education, officials, uh, SAMU, SATU, all organizations that are here, Kerata Huli Dumedisa, Le Huli Amuhela, Moskolon Saru Nasama Penani, Ana Dimjamu, Tatar Dimjadi will feel Ana Dade. Ah, there's no dade. Ana Dimjamu, you are all welcome to this school of specialization and innovation. We say, Kiboni director, director, Neri Kupe Lahuri, Skolose, Arnuko on us pity pit. Baleva Valen Kodi Tropong, Avan Nekodi Tropong Akir. Akiriba Navar Navatomile Skolose, Paskereba shot us pace. Rather accommodate a bale baba na melandi taxi baru na baba tanka mauto rather have huna space. Let the message be be very clear. Hore bana bas kolose baba tena mo ibile bakoya kodi university from this school. I welcome you all, MEC. Thank you very much. And again. As a politician, we will be heading to the elections next year. We are starting with the nominations. We wish you all the best, MEC. You, are, you will be one of our first nomination, nominees. Will be, you will be nominated in all the branches. Because we don't want to lose such a person like yourself, MEC. You are an asset to the Department of Education. When MEC and the current Premier of Haute, when he left the department, we were so worried. But now, I, Liana Kishoka Linkote, we bet him I next I receive. Education is in good hands. You are number one on our list. Alala, I miss you. He's coming back. Alala, ala. All branches of the ANC. Alala, this is our first candidate. I'm here to lobby the MEC. We are not going to lose the MEC. You are coming back, my father, my brother. I remove. Alala, I miss you. Alala. Thank you very much. You are all welcome. Can it Rory? We feel welcome more Harangu and Mama Penani School of Specialization. How's Violet? Or should I say Comrade Violet? Refill Ramohet. Or Ramohet Tota, or if you don't have a lot of money, or a Rene aligned Ralebo, you can take. A, 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 a leader from a leadership position, but you cannot take a politician from any environment. When he's a, a politician sees more than two people, <laughs> he wants to mobilize. <laughs> so she she saw more than more than three hundred people in this world, and she said, "No, I'm mobilizing." <laughs> but we feel mobilized. Uh, I was, uh, I was Thank you very much. Having been welcomed by our ward councillor, uh, we can now freely and also um, uh, call upon a message of support from Mr. Justinos Matlangu from Old Mutual, uh, who's an Old Mutual Area Manager. No, one of the aspects is that uh, uh, Matlangu comes to the stage. One of the success factors of a school of specialization is to ensure that we've got partners with business in the area. 
And DDG Allison Dexon will tell you that without partnership with business and stakeholders, schools of specialization will struggle to survive. Therefore, Old Mutual is here today as one of the partners, probably uh, representing all the other partners, to come and share with us their message of support to this particular gathering. Over to you, Ntade Maklangu. Uh, thank you, Program Director, and greetings to everyone in the house. Uh, my name is Rantua Shongwani. I'm, I'm standing here on behalf of our area manager, Mr. Mashangu, who couldn't make it due to ill health issues. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our MEC, all directors, deputy directors of education, district and circuit managers, principal, departmental heads and educators, and all students in the house. Uh, as all mutual, we are partners of the Department of Education and believe what is good for the department is also good for old mutual. Today, we would like to congratulate Mapenani for, for, for being nominated as the School of Specialization. The school has been placed, the school has been placed in a place of power and to empower the community of Harangua. With great power comes great responsibility. All I stand to say today is, Mapenani, you are not, you are not alone in this new journey. All Mushwal is on your side, and all schools in Harangua are under my jurisdiction, my jurisdiction. And we have an obligation as old Mushwal to give back to this community of Harangua. The children of Harangua are old Mushwal children. Let's work together as stakeholders to, en to ensure that all our children to ensure all our children into greatness as stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Matlangu, uh, for that message of support. And indeed, All Mutual is not only a partner in uh, uh, Mapenani, but also a partner to the Houghton Department of Education and, and Youth uh, in the province. And we, we also accept that the Matlangu before you vanish, uh, that the kids of Mapenani, including their staff members and AGB, are part and parcel of your target market, but also your beneficiaries. Thank you very much. We feel we feel that we are strong. Uh, without further ado, I just want to call my pro co program director, uh, Amu. As I was talking to him, uh, preparing for this particular event this morning, I asked him to say, Amu, now I like animals. You know, when I grew up, I had a puppy or I cried for a puppy in my neighborhood. And my father allowed me to have that puppy. And then it was given to me. After it was given to me, unfortunately, my parents could not afford to buy a dog more. Now I've got this animal, it's in my hands, uh, it's at my disposal, I can kill it or throw it away, whatever, and I decided to keep it even though there were no dog moths at my place. And the only thing in a way in which that particular little thing could survive was to share a meal with me for lunch and for dinner. Therefore, every time when my mom prepared pap and spinach or, or, or then cabbage, I'll spare a little bit for my puppy so that it also has lunch and dinner. And maybe that's the reason why I'm so short. I did not eat enough when I was young. <laughs> but that puppy grew up and it looked after me. In, it was a very good to me. And no one could touch me because it protected me when it grew up. But I had another challenge with this dog as it grew up. And that particular challenge I think I need to share it with you after I've allowed um, to come and introduce the next item. And I must warn you that the next stage of this puppy's life, 
is only for the brave. If you are not brave, I'll request you to close your eyes and ears. Over to you, Amu. Thank you, Director. <laughs> I'm sure that no one can do, everyone can do it to hear what happened with you and the puppy. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, we have SOS activities. And the first activity that we have is the conversation on research and demonstration of the working stick led by Neo Oratile, Major Amohelang, and Tato Sephora. Let's welcome them to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Oratile, and I would like to introduce my teammates. Neo, Tato, Major, and lastly we have Amohela. Before we get into today's category, I would like to welcome you all here to witness our school's launch. As we all know that our school is now a research and innovation school, so today we are going to look at the research part of it. What I can say is that, Research is a powerful and essential tool that leads to progress. That's right. And new products, facts, concepts, and new ways of doing things are found due to growing research in the physical, biological, social, and psychological fields. And nowadays, research is not done only in the lab, but everywhere. Each and every day, people start to know new information without even noticing. True. And having access to more researching tools is an advantage to researchers. So, Oratile, let's define research a little bit more so that everyone can understand. The word research is made up of two words. Research, which means search again. One can say it's a systematic investigation or activity that helps people gain new knowledge of already existing facts. Did you know that it is responsible for correcting and removing existing misconceptions? According to Monroe's, research can also be defined as a way to analyze problems with solutions that are to be drawn partly or entirely from facts. Okay then, what's the purpose of research? Well, the main purpose of research is to find out the truth that is hidden and not discovered as yet in order to innovate and make our country a more developed one. Wow, that's a mouthful. Let's talk about the types of research available. So. We have different categories of research. The one that is based on the nature of the information and the other one that is based on the subject studies. We have those that are based on the approach and research. Lastly, we have those that are based on the research methods. I feel like we've said a lot, but it is still confusing and too technical. Okay, let's make it easy. Has anyone here tried peeling an onion from inside out? Let me see. challenging, right? With an onion comes lots of tears. This tears resembles the challenges that one faces while conducting research. Same goes with the research onion model, which will be our foundation of how we do our research and find innovative ways of doing things. The research onion model has six layers that bring various challenges. These six layers are research philosophy, research choice, research approach, research strategy, time horizon, data collection, and data analysis. One of the challenges that I face is not crying while I cut an onion. So, you stop cutting because of that? No ways. I continue and mix it with other ingredients in order to get something tasty and delicious out of it. Same with the research onion model. The six layers come with their challenges, but the data collected at the end, it allows us to innovate and achieve new knowledge. Okay, I feel like we've said a lot. I would like, I would like to hand over to my teammates to come and demonstrate one of the researches that we made in our school. Thank you, Nebo. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as students of Mapenani, we are proud to share with you a remarkable invention which exemplifies the power of community and the transformative potential of computer applications technology. 
Research showed us that in our community, there are a lot of blind and visually impaired individuals. The challenges these people face are multiple, but their biggest challenges is navigating around places and not bumping into objects. According to a survey of, of 300 legally blind individuals, over 40% of them bump into an obstacle at least once a month. We took it upon ourselves to make something that will help them with that struggle. The Smart White Cane is a GPS assisted navigational system for the visually impaired. This project is a shining example of how technology can be used to bridge gaps and enrich the lives of everyone in the community. I will hand over to my teammate who will explain further. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. As my teammates have already told you that I'm going to give you more information based on our project. The Smart White Can has a GPS tracker that can locate the user's position. And it also has an ultrasonic sensor, which can sense any big object that may harm a user. Let's not forget about the buzzer that acts as a messenger to alert the user from working against any big object. As we have done some researches about the cases in our community, we believe this project can help many people that are visual impaired and also blind people. As the learners of Mapenani SOS, we chose not to keep this idea to ourselves, but to share with people with Idirele, the school for the blind. I will now hand over to my teammate who will tell you more about our research. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. As students at Mapenani, we have taken the initiative to make a positive impact on the lives of others. This selfless approach embodies the true essence of the community. The project showcases the power of technology and how it will build and improve our community. The systems, programs and devices that was used to advocate this project to work is incorporated with the guidance of our educator and computer application technology. A compiled PowerPoint presentation that is running in the background showing the progress of building this project and the components like CPU, motherboard and ROM to make software work. In conclusion, let us celebrate the outstanding effort of our Penani student in creating a GPS that is assisted with a navigational system for the visual impaired. Thank you, Amu. Um, MEC, now that you've heard us talk about our project, would you mind trying it out? Mr. MEC, I will start off by explaining how our project works. These are ultrasonic sensors. They sense objects that are directly in front of them. So when you are working with a white cane, please hold it perfectly straight. Okay. <laughs> the audience are suggesting that you must take off your glasses. I will keep them safe in this bag. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I'm close. Yeah, I get four minutes and more. Oh. Okay. So when the buzzer beeps, it will alert you that there is an obstacle in front of you, and then you will have to move to the side. When the beeping stops, you will progress forward. So Let me take you to the starting point. I just or I keep it up like this. Yes. Please. Okay. Uh, walk slowly, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now you may start walking. So I must close my eyes. Yes, trust us, you won't get hurt. <laughs> now you must move to the side. Yes, now move forward. Thank you. Well 
the cameraman. <laughs> Thank you, ABC. If this is not a perfect example of research, I don't know what is. And to think that this is only the beginning. Thank you all for being here. I think now you know what we as Mapenani SOS are all about. Thank you, fellow learners. We thank you, Conversation on Research, and for demonstrating the working stick. I think that is a good example. The working stick is a good example of the innovation part of your school, ladies and gentlemen. They truly thought outside of the box and made a solution of a problem for the blind. Moving on, we have the second learner activity, the podcast career in research and innovation and I'm not believing what I'm seeing with my eyes. But they say, this is only Kony. One of the most famous people I know is in, and she is the leader. Let's welcome Tiseto, Oratile, Udirile, Bokal, Moteo, and Humble to the stage. That's Tiseto in the front. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Just Chilling at Mapenani Podcast! <laughs> My name is Tisa Tolokoni and today in our show the topic is about careers in research and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, please introduce yourselves. Good day, MEC, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen. My name is Oratila Mafereka, and I am a research scientist. Good day, MEC, distinguished guests, and rest of you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kudir Lekas, and I am a research and development manager. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bogama Dumba, and I'm an intellectual property lawyer. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mutao Matakala, an entrepreneurship and startups researcher. I think. Good day, MC, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Humula Mama Boya. I'm a science communication journalist. Thank you. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, a career in research and innovation offers numerous opportunities to contribute to the advancement in science, technology, society and techno technology. It also involves in-depth investigation, generating new knowledge and finding a, an innovative solution to the complex problem. She's at Mapenani Research Center. Oratile, please tell us what does a research scientist do? Well, Tisezo, since you asked, research scientist works in various disciplines, such as biology, chemistry, physics, or engineering. We design and conduct experiments, collect and analyze data, and develop theories to advance scientific knowledge. We work in universities, government laboratories, and private research institution. Now, as you heard, I am at Mabenane Research Center, so I have to get back to the lab before something explodes. Thank you. Thank you, Oratile. Odirile, she's at her office. Odirile, please tell us what does a research and development manager do? Thank you, Tiseto. A research and development manager 
oversees the research and development activities within an organization. They set research goals, allocate resources, manage project timelines, and ensure successful project execution. We will also stay updated on advances in technology and industry trends, identify research opportunities, and foster a culture of innovation within an organization. I thank you. Hmm, wow, that's interesting. Advocate Bakam, what about you? What does an intellectual property lawyer do? Um, thank you, Zetzo. An intellectual property lawyer specializes in protecting and enforcing intellectual rights. We work with researchers, inventors, organizations that secure patents, copyrights, and trademarks. We conduct intellectual property searches, we draft legal documents, we negotiate licensing agreements, and we provide guidance on to intellectual property solutions and disputes. Thank you. Intellectual property lawyer said, is there any link between PIPOA Act, OPIA Act, and intellectual property? We want to know. Absolutely not. Um, the POPI Act of 2013 set up minimum standards regarding to accessing and processing of any personal information belonging to someone else. And the intellectual property protects people, um, people's inventions. So that's basically what we have to do as intellectual property lawyers. We have to protect people's inventions and properties. Wow, that's interesting. Thank you, Bokang, Motel Entrepreneurship and Startup Researcher. What do they do? Well, Tisetsu, since you asked, many researchers with entrepreneurial aspirations choose to launch their own startups. Now, these ventures often emerge from innovative research findings or technologies. As an entrepreneur, we, be, we are responsible for commercializing our research, securing funding, building a team, and navigating the complexities of launching and scaling a business. I thank you. Wow, I never knew that starting a business requires in-depth investigation. Now we have Humulemo, our science and communication journalist. Thank you, Dizetu. Well, us as science communicators play a crucial role in publicizing research findings to broader audiences. We translate complex scientific concepts into accessible language. We write articles. We also engage with the public through various platforms. Careers in science journalism involve in reporting on scientific discoveries, breakthroughs, and their social impact. And as for me, one day I would like to work for National Geographic. Thank you. Just few examples of careers in research and innovation. It is an exciting and dynamic field that requires critical commitment and dedication. With that being said, MEC, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our episode. Till next time, goodbye. <laughs> And thank you to let I offer thanks to Saibono for helping our kids and assisting them with everything they need and everything that they could do for them. Moving on to the third learner activity, we have the debate on school of specialization. Takato, Ritumeti, Tsefofato, Bitumelo, Totang, Tato, and Mohau. Let's welcome them to the stage. Distinguished guests, 
ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Tofa Tomasango, a proud learner of Mapinani Math Science and ICT School of Specialization, focusing on research and innovation. Our debate topic for today is going to be the importance of SOS in our community. We see that most learners are concerned as what is going to happen to their careers as our school has been transitioning into SOS. Well, this side we have the affirmative team and this side we have the opposing team. They're going to elaborate more about this topic, but first let me introduce them. Here we have Bipelo, Mohau, Tulang, Ritimeti, Tato, and thank you so. Ladies and gentlemen, we may begin. believe that an SOS is important because it provides sector-specific skill shortages in South Africa. And with the skills obtained, one is faced with a multitude of post-metric options that can shape one's career path. With that being said, the SA statistic had clearly stated that our country's population is growing steadily each year. This means that we need to improve our infrastructure like schools, houses, hospitals, clinics, etc. And to mend these, we need more doctors, engineers, teachers, etc. The health minister, Dr. Joe Partha, has clearly revealed that the doctor to patient ratio is one to three, meaning that one doctor is said to be treating a thousand patients, leading to our country imported doctors from other countries to come and fill the gap. This is a waste of money and as to our already exhausted resources. I oppose. Skills can be obtained in ordinary schools. So according to my point of view, the South African higher education sector has introduced a number of measures to ensure that the skills gap can be filled. So why can it be with ordinary schools? Because I don't understand the importance of SOS. I really don't understand the importance of SOS. I mean, aren't they just copying secondary schools? Well, here it is, Sam. Establishing schools of specialization is one of those measures the DV is implanting to play its part. What I'm trying to say is that I believe SOS is important. Why? Because SOS schools strive to deliver learners to specialized field so that SA does not import other skilled workers from other countries to come do the work. Also, here is it. We have principles of SOS for which According to principles of SOS legislation under SASAM section 4, section 12 of 1996, the MECM has the responsibility to change some of public schools into SOS and provide learners with appropriate funds. Secondly, we have teachers' recruitment and development, whereby teachers are being upskilled and reskilled for teaching purposes. Lastly, in terms of curriculum, new learning areas have been introduced such as ICT, coding, and robotics. Now, we as today's opposing team agree that this may lead to a slight boost in college application, but this school of specialization takes away from students the ability to further their knowledge in other areas, leading to a less fulfillment Overall, a less high school, a less balanced high school lifestyle. Now, we believe that it will be difficult for learners who would want to change careers in the future as they have already focused on that particular skill in high school. I guess you need a bit of schooling regarding this one, miss. I mean, <laughs> it's not that difficult if it's daunting enough, if you have the confidence to do it, and if you check with a knowledgeable contact. Thank you. The clearest downside of a specialization is that it discourages students with, from pursuing other interests that may not fit. Not all of us are good in numbers. And when you name a school of a specialization, how are learners supposed to cope? Well, just to be clear, SOS schools offers what other mainstream schools offers. Learners are free to pursue their other interests. And according to research, if you tell your mind that you can do it, then you will be able to do it. As we all know the saying, I quote, if you aim for nothing, you will get nothing. 
coming to my next argument against the SOS is that we have history and commerce learners in our school and we don't have a clear solution on what will happen to them. But, and yet it feels like we're neglecting and excluding these learners. But who knows, maybe that learner we excluded or neglected would have become a lawyer that would, that would have helped you in the future or a tour guide that would have made your day a memorable one, etc. Well, I get your concern, my fellow opponent, but here is it. Mabenani is not here to neglect other students, but the main, the main focus is on medicine science. Let's also remember that we have five categories of SOS, namely engineering, math, science, and ICT, sports, performing and creative arts, lastly, entrepreneurs and commerce. So learners can be involved to schools that specialize with their skills and focuses on their careers. However, this school of specialization implements pressure of permanent concentration on learners, and this pressure often manifests in what kinds of curriculums one might choose or extra... <sighs> okay, let me start, sorry. <laughs> However, this school of specialization implements pressure of permanent concentration on the learners, and this pressure often manifests in what kind, often manifests in what kind of curriculums one might choose or extra, extra activities one might join. And we believe, and research has also proven, that 61% of the teenagers between the age of 13 and 17 has already admitted over stressed over producing satisfactory grades. Academic stress has, so a lot, has also led to a prevalence, psychological and physical problems like depression, anxiety, nervousness, and other stress-related disorders. As Shaman Parker has said, mental health affects every aspect of your life. It is not just this neat little issue you can put in a box. Academic, pre academic pressure is real for those who strive for academic validation, including myself, of course. But in most cases, pressure enhances concentration, motivation, and enjoyment for one to can upgrade their productivity level such as destabilized families whereby there's a whereby there's a is communication amongst us people are now always on their on their phones and gadgets and they are still wasting the time they, they were supposed to be this oh sorry such as destabilized families whereby there's a communication amongst us people are, are always on their phones gadgets and instead of having family quality time secondly it makes it, it makes people lazy for themselves and because information is needly already available. Why need communication when you can travel the whole world using your cell phone? Haha, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Let's get this straight. There's no way ICT can stop intellectual communication. That's what people minds with. As we all know that our world revolves around science. Science that is formed from ICT, for which it creates better, more information. Many people create a sustainable life, a more developed life. I'm talking about employment for self, from cell phone, from skills that they obtain in SOS, for which is one of the advantages that SOS can offer. Imagine if everyone had access to internet, ICT, social media. Imagine how everyone had access to create employment for their families. I think our world would be a more developed life. Also, also, the learners who absorb more information and understand clearly by using apps such as YouTube. That's why I say we need SOS. Thank you. Mapenani got a high pass rate of about 94,6% last year. Was it because it was an SOS school? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> It was only acknowledged as an SOS school after it got a high pass rate. And also, I say this because there's a possibility that SOS will limit the employment rate and increase the youth unemployment rate, which is so right. Thus I say, an SOS is just the name on a piece of board and paper, not the mind of a learner. the new sun, I mean, stats as a head revealed that the unemployment rate had fell by 0.3 percent because 143,000 jobs were created. Why? Because there are more skilled, we need more skilled workers and Mopenani, Mad Science and ICT will create those skills, skilled workers. I mean, 
Imagine a world be without skilled workers. With the skills inquired, learners will be able to start their own businesses and decrease the unemployment rate. We need more job creators and less job seekers. And, and ICT will just increase the number for, ICT, for, for job seekers. And for instance, people who will benefit are in charge at the ICT. So where will we leave those people without jobs? <laughs> well, there is no specific answer to that, my fellow opponent. Because whether you are or you want to be a job creator or a job seeker, until and unless you know what you want to pursue in life. Honestly, what is the link between research and innovation? Innovation creates direct, creates direct opportunities for research. I mean, if you research and rethink, you will be able to turn, re turn a research into an innovation. Okay, let's sum up this debate. We are not yet convinced. On the last point, we feel like more money should be given to more learners who, to empower more learners in more schools. But anyways, all we truly want is education and normal schools are already offering that. And we can, all, we can all agree that normal schools has also diverse students to health, construction, and other fields. We thank you. We also conclude by saying, SOS has many benefits that people don't realize. And it also has an aim. The aim is to bridge a gap between great health, future education, and employment, while expanding learner and teacher support, enhancing skills, and learning opportunities. We thank you. As I quote, science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity, for which is a torch that illuminates the world by Louis Pasteur, scientist in biology. Thank you. Well, 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 well. I see everybody got their spirits up. Isn't it fascinating that both our team got their own perspective about this topic? Well, like Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. A good head and a good heart are always a formidable combination. But when you add that to a literary tongue or pen, then you have something way more special. Like take this as an example. Here at Mopanani Math Science and ICT offer you that powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you. are very good, I tell you, the kids are very, very much good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, my hopes go with the affirmative side that we need the SOS schools in our community. If you don't want to come to our school, there are nearby schools, Ranteilani, Mudiri, Olele, and many other more. And in case you were wondering, someone mentioned that our school last year got a 94.4 grade in the metric results. Yes, it was not an ICT, but my pen and it just finds its way to go through up, just like a rocket does, while flying, ladies and gentlemen. If you, before you came here, you were supposed to make a research, which means research again. You would know that before there was a school called Mapenani Math Science and ICT, School of Specialization. There was the home affairs in their home grounds. There was Albert and Mapenani Middle School. With the lack of discipline, it was Albert was closed and the entire place was Mapenani Middle School. And from middle school to a high school. But it doesn't just end there. From high school to a school of specialization, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My penalty just keeps on going up and up. The sky is our limit, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Moving on, we have the last activity, which is the panel discussion and display on recycling. Sefu Fatomati, Lebohani, Kulufelo, Matati, Karabu, and Bukamuso. Let's welcome them to the stage, ladies and gentlemen.
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sego Fatomadli, a proud learner here at Mabenani Math, Science and ICT School of Specialization with a focus on research and innovation. Today we will be having a talk show about the adverse impact of solid waste on the environment. My team of researchers and I went out to research on the current waste management practices in Harangua. And the research indicates that the community of Harangua produce more waste than they can manage. Ladies and gentlemen, the disposal of waste through landfill is not a perfect solution. It is like throwing your gold and diamonds to the peaks. As research, as research indicated, we have found other solutions to this problem. And the first solution is the separation of waste source. Please welcome Mr. Levohan Pandiani to come and elaborate more about the separation of waste source. Mr. Pandiani, the stage is yours. Good day, everyone. What is the separation of waste at source? The separation of waste at source refers to the sorting and separation of waste types to facilitate recycling and correct on what disposal. This action is done using color-coded bins. These bins help both collecting and separation of waste. You wouldn't struggle with identifying what sort of waste goes where. You would find them as follow. The green bin for bio-waste, the blue bin for paper, the yellow bin for glass, the red bin for plastic and the black bin for metal. The separation of waste at source can lead to less material being thrown away. As all sorts of waste are placed in one bin, it is hard to separate, clean and reuse them. Like paper, when it is infused with liquid waste, it is hard to reuse it or rather impossible. So, the separation of waste at source is the best way to practice the third arts, which are reduce reuse and recycle, and their aim is to lower the amount of waste we throw, save natural landfill space and energy. So I advise, recycle like your life depends on it. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pandiani. I hope each and everyone here has learned something. But here's a question we should all ask ourselves. Is food waste? No, food is and will never be waste. Food can be turned into fertilizers. How? Through composting. We are going to hear more about composting from our other member, Kolofana Lepale. Please welcome her with a big round of applause. Good day, everyone. My name is Kolofana Lepale. I'm going to give you a lovely information about composting. Well, firstly, you would like to know what is composting. Composting is a process of breaking down organic materials like food scraps and leaves to create a nutrient rich soil. Well, composting is a great way to, redu to recycle nutrients back into the soil. However, moisture can support composting process. Reducing food waste at home is a big part of composting. And guys, there are lots of ways to do that. You can plan a meal ahead of us, so you don't need to overbuy food. You can use up your leftover food in a very creative way, like turning them into new dishes. And guys, please, don't forget to use your freezer. You can freeze your leftover food instead of letting them go to waste. But composting benefits us all because it prevents soil erosion, storm water management, and reduced waste. So food and will never be waste. Thank you. Another source of an environmental problem that communities are not able to manage is plastic pollution. Am I right or wrong, ladies and gentlemen? Right. Plastic pollution has a bad effect on the Earth's biodiversity. We will have Ms. Ramatat Ramatabani to come and elaborate more about plastic pollution. Please welcome her with a big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Makati Ramadawan. 
Today I'll be talking about plastic pollution. Plastic pollution is the accumulation of synthetic plastic products and particles in the environment that adversely affects human life, wildlife and the habitat. Plastic is increasingly considered as one of the problematic waste streams that are occupying landfill sites, illegal dams, rivers and ultimately oceans. There are ways in which all of us in this community or around the world can reduce plastic, such as saying no to single-use plastics, like straws, water bottles, including plastic shopping bags. When going shopping, remember to take a cloth bag or a paper bag. I mean, like, we go shopping once a week to fill up our fridges. So if you take a cloth bag, the plant health will improve, which will benefit us all. Make those around you aware of the importance of reducing the consumption of plastic. Choose to reuse and give some packaging a new purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of ways we can do for us to live in a healthy environment. Thank you. Thank you, Matati. Now, here's another problem, glass. People highly believe that glass can cause pollution. But no, it won't. Did you know that if this material is made, it can last for generations and generations? Research indicates that glass has a lifespan of up to 360 years. So just imagine it in the landfill side. So we, as the learners at Mapenani Math Science and ICT School of Specialization, came up with a new idea. And that idea was to turn bottles into ornaments. Ornaments that you can use to decorate with at your home, at your house or office, or can generally be sold and lowering the unemployment rate in South Africa. So you can, you can as you can see, research and innovation has a big part in our lives. But now, here at Mapenan, we believe in giving waste a second life, which we call to repurpose. We'll be having Bogamo Somachila to come and elaborate more about upcycling. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Fukamu Somatila and I would like to start by saying what is upcycling. Firstly, upcycling is the act of taking something you no longer use, giving it a second life and new function. The purpose of upcycling is to help achieve two of the three R's which are reduce and reuse, whereby reduces what goes into landfill sites, reuses the product you already going to throw away without the need of degrading it. The benefits of upcycling is to save what goes into landfill sites, reduces what goes into landfill sites, reduces manufacturing costs, minimize the use of natural resources. It can even help support local and rural industries. It's less expensive use of your resources, water, and energy. It creates a stylish and unique pieces of clothing with more responsible alternatives. It needs less capital, space, and labor. It boosts creativity and innovation. It is the unlimited availability of raw materials. For example, these benches used to be Buckler doors, now they have been repurposed into, into benches, giving them a second life. And I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the earth is dying slowly because of improper human activities. So let's protect our environment. As Zipo Sitakani said, recycling takes little effort of your part but plays a big difference to the world. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget to reduce, reuse, recycle. But before forgetting the fourth one, rethink. As the team of researchers would like to say, thank you for lending us your ears and we thank you. Thank you, panel discussion. You truly, you truly represent the three R's, including the fourth one, rethink. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Before you do something, you need to rethink what you can do with what you already have. In case, after you just take a bath, you can take that water and water the plants. When you wash your car, you can wash it on top of the lawn so that you don't have to use water for washing your car and to wash your lawn. You, can, you need to rethink so that we can save the air. <sighs> like the kids were talking about but Adi, but Adi, listen here, let's go like the ball. We let food go too hot. Why don't you just give it to our issue this puppy? You can just give it to our issue this puppy. At least it did something useful, but Adi. Please, but Adi. I hope that everyone and every each one of us has learned something and is going to make an example to their kids. And now I would like to hand over to my director our HOD. Let's welcome him. Thank you very much, Amu. You have done a sterling job. Uh, you are good. Uh, one, of the, one thing which Amu told me when we were caucusing, he says, and it's the same story uh, which I got from the co program director at US Rand, SOS. I asked him to say, I like dogs, and what do you like? Which animal do you like? And like that one at was run secondary, secondary uh, school of specialization, he said he likes snakes. Snakes. And I said, snakes? Whew. I cannot imagine myself owning a snake. And he wants to own one uh, in, in future. Uh, but all of the best are. <laughs> we want to, to thank our learners. And I think this is directors who are here led by Yvonne Moke, uh, the principal. Uh, Memoseki, the teachers, the AGB members and the community, you can see that with these learners you've got gems. Therefore what you need to do is just to polish them and the sky's the limit. I mean through them we, we had practical lessons on research, careers in uh, research and innovation, um, they also shared with us environmental care and, 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 and uh, planning and also artificial intelligence. And having spoken about artificial intelligence, Dr. Marco, one author and academic, said artificial intelligence will run the world in our lifetime. Those who embrace it become masters. Those that don't embrace it become slaves. Therefore, it's up to you whether you want to become a master or a slave. But these kids, I can assure you, they'll become masters. <laughs> now, before I introduce our keynote address, Mr. Matume Chilo and our MEC, I promise to tell you this one, two, three sentence story about my, my puppy. And this puppy, now it was growing nicely, become a real dog uh, because I was sharing this food of mine from my mom with this dog. And unfortunately, there's this mysterious Jabulani. Jabulani is not a student at uh, Mapenani School of Specialization. I don't know where he, he goes to school. But it's mysterious, but it's also naughty. So one day, because this dog did not have a chain, our fence at home in a township, like you can go to my uh, 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 parents' uh, place in Zone 2, uh, they did not have a strong fence. So this dog could go underneath the fence and go and get some bones because we're not eating meat every day. We're only meeting, eating uh, chicken or beef over the weekends. During the week, it's cabbage, spinach, and archer. <laughs> so it will go out and hunt for bones and, and uh, uh, Pe, 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 and, and look around. And this Jablani saw this stray dog walking around and he kicked it. He kicked this dog so hard that it cried so loud that I could hear it from my uh, mother's and father's forum towns. And then I went outside, Jablani ran away. Jablani is a naughty boy, Jablani. He's mysterious and he, he, he's, he, he's, he's, he's a boy about town. He's in charge. He believes he's in charge, but he's not in charge. And then I took this little dog, uh, because I love him so much, and that night I decided to sleep with it in my bed, in my bedroom. And my mother caught the dog in the house. 
And you know in the township, dogs don't sleep in the house. They sleep outside. Maybe in the suburbs, I don't know. And then I got a hiding from my mom. First of all, he said dogs don't sleep in the house. Secondly, this dog was, and I want the, all of you as listeners and viewers, maybe if you don't want to hear this, close your ears and eyes. It had lots of ticks. The blue ticks all over its body. And my mother was worried that it's going to get into all, all our family members. And then I went outside because I loved this dog so much. And I want you, I'm warning you again. If you don't want to hear, this close your ears and close your, your eyes. And I sat outside with this dog. And I one by one pulled these sticks out, the blue ones, and I was killing them with a small uh, stone throughout his body. Because we do not have money to buy these uh, dog shampoos. So I cleaned it into a spare. And I decided that I'll do that every uh, week. Uh, because it was going around picking up ticks all over. And after doing that, I said, Mom, my dog is, is no longer having ticks. Can you please uh, sleep in the house? And he said, no, dog's not in the house. And then how, that's how my dog uh, slept outside all the time. Even during rainy times, it was outside. But it was not hungry because I was still sh uh, sharing food with it. And it did not have ticks because I had that responsibility was making sure that I pull them out on a weekly basis. Those who are sensitive, you can now open your ears and eyes. <laughs> Colleagues, I want now to uh, call upon our MEC, Matume uh, for MEC for Education and Youth Development. And I need to say that uh, this MEC, uh, I normally tease him, he's one of the youngest because he's younger than me, therefore I'm proud to say I've got a young boss, I've got a young MEC. Uh, apart from being my boss, he's also a leader. A leader obviously in the uh, uh, ANC, but a leader of society and a leader of the education sector. In legal terms, we call him an executive authority. I'm the accounting officer of the department, he's the executive authority. He exercises oversight over all of us. The HOD, the DDGs, the chief directors, the directors, the deep directors, and everybody. He's in charge. But I always, uh, I don't know, I want to remind him, maybe see as you come on stage, that as you, you, you had this important portfolio in our province, it's one of the biggest portfolios, uh, in our province and is an important mandate given the fact that it touches everybody in society. Uh, and it has almost one of the biggest budgets, six, more than 63 billion is under the oversight of the MEC uh, per Chilwani. MEC, I also want to remind you that you are leading more than 2,000, almost 3,000 schools in this particular province. You are second only to KZN. More than over 30,000 schools. I, was, I also want to remind you, MEC, that you have got more than 2.5 2 million learners in this particular province. And as a politician, you know that if you have 2.5 million voters, how many reps do you have in Cape Town? Look at EFF. <laughs> A lot. Therefore, this MEC has got this portfolio, but one of the headaches of this particular MEC as he come on stage is school safety. School safety is not only about the infrastructure, it's also about the psychological challenges which our learners are having. The naughty learners like Jabulani. And I know in his speech he's not going to leave out Jabulani. He won't disappoint me. He'll also talk about school safety. Ladies and gentlemen, Allow me to call uh, and have this honor to request our MEC to come and give us a keynote address uh, for today.
That was lovely. Yeah. I must say the picture is very nice. I received one last week. Hey. I had to ask her, is it me? I wanna eat Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, H, uh, program director, HOD. Before I start, uh, I also had a dog. <laughs> and this dog was given to me by my grandfather in the villages in Limpopo. And then I came back with it. You know, you know, they give a lot birth to a lot of dogs. So I think he was getting rid of it. So I had to come back with it to how take it can take a box, camera takes. You could imagine the, the tree. It's a puppy, yarota, yakaka, everything. Margehana kayo no boxing kids here. Yeah, can't play. So I arrived in Houting. Now I had to take care of it. Um, and the tick story, that's why I'm talking about it, the tick story. And then, uh, like all dogs, they catch uh, those ticks. Hey, now I have to come up with a plan. What must I do? I, I look for advice. So one person says, no, 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 that's a problem with this thing. Just go and bath it, catch his fruit. So I put my, I just put just fruit and I put it in there. For the next couple of days, this dog is on my boy. Yeah, no way. Could I? <laughs> It was bad, <laughs> uh, uh, but eventually it recovered. But that's how far we used to go to get rid of the ticks. I don't know if it, that thing worked or something, but they, it nearly killed my dog. It was a very scary moment. So dogs are part of growing up, especially, uh, I know the boys love dogs. Not pit bulls. Not bulldogs, not bull terriers, not bull bull. Those ones must be just, they belong into Kruger National Park. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 they are very dangerous dogs. We don't need them in our communities. Um, so, but of late, I'm very scared of dogs, and I've never been bitten by a dog, mind you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Dumelan, Sanbonani, Absheni, good afternoon, Huya Dah, Da, Gala Machelun, Masavarge, Masiari. I must mention all languages. The program directors, as I begin, this is the most important part. If you are a politician or a public speaker, you must always do this, is to greet and acknowledge people. But this thing of acknowledgement, we take it very serious. So let me start by acknowledging everyone who's here. Our two program directors, our acting HOD, uh, HOD Aksoke and Akesho. <laughs> so, acting HOD, but I saw you brought your sister, Ratu Buela. <laughs> so, I, I could hear she was whispering, How can you be sharp? So, I'm still uh, uh, assessing, but uh, nevertheless, you are the HOD. Uh, our program director, Amkhelang. You're doing a very sterling job. Very proud of you, my son. You're doing very well. <laughs> Our DDG, who's present here, DDG Ellison, uh, is the leader of our core business, the one who's responsible for all schools, uh, <laughs> SOS, the Ross program. You are acknowledged. The Portfolio Committee in Absentia uh, is also acknowledged. Our union representatives, Nehau, Neptosa, Natu, Kosatu, uh, Satu, 
Uh, Satwa must mention it. I know it's a big union in the area. Leadership of the African National Congress present here from the branch up to the regional level. Uh, our motivational guest speakers, the professor. Uh, I know the professor is a very, very controversial uh, leader of, uh, in academia, uh, HOD. Hey, your sister, they are well. Uh, you know, of recent, the UCT, but I like her. She's a groundbreaker. She doesn't take no from anyone. She's, not, she's fearless. Uh, Old Mutual and other stakeholders uh, who are supporting our initiative and are supporting our schools. GD staff and our CEOs. We've, I saw the CEO of uh, Matthew Goniwe. I didn't see Saibono, although I saw quotes from Saibono. So I do believe that the Saibono is here. Representative of faith-based organization, uh, leadership of the school, the school principal, the SGB chair, and members of the community present. Uh, learners, uh, you saw the talent we have in the school. I don't need to say much to say, except to say that I am confident of the future. I'm really confident of the future. After what I've seen today, I'm very, very sure that South Africa, we are going somewhere. And as a Department of Education, we are doing something. So there's definitely something right that we are doing. We just need to incubate, protect, and ensure that we give them the opportunity to excel. But that can't be without the educators who are actually teaching them, you know, who are actually playing the mentor, the parent, the, all the important role uh, that is done during school hours. The principals from other SOSs, ladies and gentlemen, this is our 25th school of specialization. So we're short of 11. Uh, and I need to tell you, this and how thing, this is the most in the country. We are leading, and not only leading, we are getting it right, you know. Uh, and SOS, I saw the debate, which is good. Um, we, we want our kids to have a curious mind, as the professor said. I like to say a questioning mind. Uh, and in research, they will say that you need to apply the five whys. Uh, do you know the five whys? Why is it done? Why must it be? Why is it so? Why is it so? So you, until you get to the bottom of it. Um, uh, and we as Gauteng, we are getting this SOS program right. In other countries, it's called focus schools. We call it school of specialization. And we are on our 25th of 36. Our ambition as a department is to have all our schools to focus on something. Like the learners were saying, what if I want to do this? What if I want to do this? We need to get to a point where once they leave primary education, because currently we are doing it in high school, once they leave primary education, they are able to just think, to say, this is what I think. Because when you're in primary, you don't know what you really want to be, but you want to be successful. Uh, at some point, I wanted to be a scientist. Marakepal like a maths. So you could imagine the ambition was not correlating with the results of maths. Uh, but it's normal, you know. Uh, and with this focus schools or through the specialization, we will be able to take those learners from primary education into our high schools uh, and be able to sharpen them 
and drive them into where they want to be. We are producing problem solvers here. You can see they've already done an invention. And we've already got uh, young people who, who are also understand that you need to patent it. So, Banabaka, your invention, go and patent it. Because you'll never know. Uh, there's been an incident as well in one of the SOSs. I don't know how far is the uh, DDG from, uh, is it Ketes Nkondo? That designed a machine that as you go into, it can tell you blood pressure, your everything. That machine was designed by learners. So you can see these OSS are producing that kind of a talent. So one doctor in Soweto saw that idea and then Ayezan Gargai Tsuzi. Doctor Tsuzi was a doctor one native. So we need to protect these ideas because these young people have come up with something that this walking stick for a blind person, it beeps, it vibrates, that you are about to uh, hit something. So that is lovely. This one want to see this ourselves do. So our kids have been able to expand what we want to do with SOSs. Actually, after these uh, four activities, I really felt that, that there's nothing really to say because they've explained to all of us what is it that we want to achieve with the School of Specialization, end to end. So this is our 25th, and, 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 and this is a deliberate program. It started ambitiously, but it's a deliberate program. SOS is, we target the best of the best amongst our learners. Uh, the counselor, uh, I know she's out uh, in the absentia, will recognize as well. And by the way, ah, no, but come off Nicks, please. I need to put you on the record. I want a nix, I got a nix. So, maybe kitty kid. So, this is a deliberate program. You know, we're doing it deliberately to ensure that we are able to go into our township schools and within the structure. Remember, our target, our goal as a department is to get the structure right. Uh, structuring, I mean, uh, beyond a functional school, but the structure needs to have that particular movement uh, towards a particular direction, which is progress or not. And this is what we're trying to do all the time, getting the structure right, the fluidity for our learners to progress from, high, from primary to high, secondary to tertiary, the structuring of it, and the seamless integration within each layer. This is what we want to do. So, so it's a deliberate program. Uh, they've written me a speech, so I'll just quote. I always speak my mind, so so that the speech writers can hold my So that he feels that uh, his efforts are acknowledged. There's a, there's a quote, uh, a, a Greek proverb that says, uh, a society grows when the old men plant trees in whose shadow they shall never sit. And that's what we are doing. We are planting these seeds, these young people, with this SOS program. So that by the time we are gone, we know that they will be able to be taking our country forward. Gauteng is not just any province, uh, HOD. This is the melting pot of the country, if not the continent. This is where everything, the anchor, the root anchor, economically, and all innovation within our continent. And we must demonstrate it by the level and degree of investment we are doing in different levels, especially in education. I recently went to, to China. Uh, and, and, and mind you, China is a classical example of uh, when we say you must fake it until you make it. Hmm? The Chinese used to make a lot of fakes, Laobo Lager. 
I made in China, made in China. Today, they lead in innovation and research, literally, in the world. Uh, that's why they've cemented themselves internationally, economically, as a manufacturing hub of the world. Because anywhere you want to develop something, they've already, at that stage, have created the capacity that once you think it, we can do it. What do you want? You know, they tell you when you arrive. What is it on your mind? You want this thing? We'll do it. And that's where we want to position our province. We want Gauteng to be at that level. That's why the level of investment we're doing, not only in education, but also getting other aspects of our province right. You know that our Premier, the former MEC, has a program, obviously, first thing to do is to fight crime. Uh, the green beans. Yeah, the green beans. Plus, we could never have a tabatua. Yeah, no, Maravasca Shapa Navaka. Don't touch my kids who have problems. First is to fight crime. How do you fight it? You bring in technology to assist you to fight crime. Where we are going, we are putting cameras everywhere. And these cameras are, are CCTV cameras that are able to identify, put face to name immediately. That's the technology that we are putting now. Already we have started it. Uh, if you follow, as uh, the professor says, if you're on social media, follow the right people. Follow our pages, provincial government, you'll see. Uh, some of our work that we are doing, where there's a command centre in place, where we are monitoring uh, our province across. And we are also moving in that direction as education, uh, HOD and DDG Edison. I want cameras in classrooms. We are going to be putting cameras in classrooms. Not to say real cartilage, of course. Mr. Ese will no longer have a problem of saying Kimanga needs to touch and leave us. We'll just rewind and we'll see Kimanga to Yang. But those cameras that we're putting, they will also be able to assist us to see. Uh, our kids come to school ill sometimes. And the technology we're putting, uh, we will be rolling out beginning towards the end of the year. We're starting, obviously. Uh, Ms. Mapanyadi has missed the pass, but we will come back here. They will be able to also assist to read the temperature of our learners. When the child is sick, we will know this child is sick. Because a child can come to school sick and affect other learners. Then you have a class that is it's already flu. So to avoid that particular situation, amongst other things, we will be putting this if the child doesn't concentrate, it will also tell us. It will give you a report to a teacher that in the past week, uh, Matume has been sleeping in class. What could be the problem? Because it's able to gauge the eye contact of the child. Then we're able to address it. And say, Wanaka, this child has is is been sleeping in class. What could be? Is it at home? Harvali? Is it what? Then we're able to also solve. So we're bringing technology to assist us to ensure that when we provide this education, we are able to also impact, because it's, ours is not just schools. Uh, you'll assume that our responsibility is just you here. We are producing leaders or members of communities. So we need to start early, work with them up. So this technology is going to help us a lot. And the beauty about uh, Mapenani School of Specialization with a focus on uh, research and innovation. Uh, the, this is a big challenge. Engineering is better. So Shanghuva School of Specialization King is engineering. You are just engineering. Automotive, yeah, mechanics. We are producing mechanics in Social Guva School of Specialization. Here, we are producing researchers. 
You know, researchers, these are world changers. This is content. We are producing content leaders. This is our focus. I'm not saying we're producing mechanics, engineers. Uh, SOS is one of our best schools, I'm sure you know it. You know the, the goal, the, 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 the milestones that they've achieved, uh, the, the awards that they've achieved. And this is a model SOS that Mapenani principal, you are going to be contesting with. Chair. Uh, for the school governing body. This is a, this, no, you are in a different league now. Uh, we are in the UEFA Champions League of Schools. That's an SOS. It's the UEFA Champions League of Schools. The research component is content component. Uh, the DDG earlier, or is it HOD, who spoke about an app? Yesterday we had a meeting with the senior management of the school of the department and i was say that we just need an app you know an app that parents can download and instead of going to twitter or facebook to say this is the let's have an app that really you even learners have access to it they can uh, submit their concern their queries whatever in that app of our department, and we are able to receive it firsthand, you know, so that we can make make or bridge the gap between uh, the, the senior management of the department or the, the MEC or HOD with the parent, because technology, amongst other things, it bridges the gap, it closes that gap, and that got me thinking as well that uh, HOD maybe we must have a, consider a competition for staff. You know, um, I like solutions. Uh, the purpose of us being here, a uh, councillor, as you say, as politicians, politicians are here to solve problems. We are here to solve people's problems. That's our role. That's what politicians do. Now, because I like ideas, maybe let's consider having a competition whereby there will be awards to say educators and learners tell us how can we enhance or improve your situation in schools what is it that we can do more you know because when we're sitting as, as an MEC I'm not a reserve of knowledge I don't know everything uh, I don't know what to read I know you want something but I can't always guess that this needs to be done. You know, let's do something that really gets our educators to tell us in Mapenani to improve the outcomes of Mapenani. This is what we think, or this is what I think as educator X, you should do. Then you get, you'll improve the situation of our school or you improve the way I, I provide or I, I do my job as an educator and as a learner, you also have the same space to say, if you do this in the school, you resolve this problem, you resolve this problem, then the situation of our schools will be better. So, it's your job now. Now, we're getting to the salary. I thought of something, and now you'll just make it work, uh, DDG. That how do we get this thing going? So that we can collectively, because I believe in working together. I believe in collective leadership and collective sol problem solving. And in that way, we can get to that point where we, we solve the, the problems of our schools. And that goes to school safety. As the HOD knows, that's number one. It just elevated itself above metric results into my, on my agenda to do list and fix. We aim to fix our schools. You know, we, aim, we, we will be fighting bullying. I don't want bullies. I don't know what's going on. More, once we can have a gate, 
ungwa na sikulu ha u khrotmane ha u khrotmane na hayo skatla ka mo ungwa na sikulu mo ye ye we will not tolerate any bullying how not clever muske la mo mo tre tuta tlo hula tlo bala tlo iketsa pitiri mo phelong a rona that's why we are here so we will be dealing with bullies we have a plan around bullies and the first thing that we is when you are a bully re tlo ntsa mo skolong pele that's what you must know so if there's a bully utswa ro tshonya bana ba bang your days uh, are few must get if you know or tshonya bana ba bang you are disturbing them you are making them uncomfortable just know the first thing we're going to do is to remove you from the school and leave those who want to study at the school that's that's the first thing so we have a program around bullies and to rehabilitate we are not saying are unka ru isa strating ru lahla strating but there's a challenge that you know with uh, uh, another issue that we have with expulsions you know once when our school was so kuba eh tsedi ngwa di tsao batla that's what you must know once school was so kuba tsedi ngwa di tsao batla how na principal was willing to accept you if you expelled in another school what about so sir because they are saying you are going to mess up their schools so always remember that when you start being naughty in school that if i mess up i might not find another school or i'll struggle to get another school and i'm sitting with many requests on my table with parents of children who are expelled and schools don't want them they are refusing and i can't blame them to a large extent because nobody will want mwana at all at all this step as kolosa i at this step ilekwa you see so that is very important that you must always remember that you have to get this issue of uh, school discipline right the uh, principal and district directors and principals who are here another culture that we have forgone in our schools as a solution to our problems we want school assemblies to come back okay we are bringing school assemblies back and in those assemblies district direct not assembly on friday i don't know how many times principal how many times do you have an assembly twice a week you you will you live to increase frequency of it uh, because in the assemblies amongst other thing we want you to teach our kids first of all what they do the school code of conduct the motto the songs the national anthem the prayer we used to be sing uh, uh, our father every morning they would tell us yeah, yeah every morning the prayers we want to bring that culture back of praying into our schools because the problems that I was seeing in our schools around school safety Uh, sometimes uh, are beyond us and will need some holy divine intervention so we are bringing assemblies every day where our kids are able to come in and amongst other things school discipline uh, uniform the kids look lovely everybody tucked in everybody fagile tie i mean really this is what i want to see and uh, this is what i want to see everybody need they in school they also know that we are in school and it's a small thing but i want to get it's a small thing it's not small it's not small uh, one of the ways my parents taught me discipline was to do my bed in the morning because once you go on and peto how you are going to do the next thing of bathing you are going to do the next thing of thinking about properly constructively about your day but the minute you are in bed you are going to go back to bed 
there, you're going to go to bed, or you're going to go to the sofa. But once you go to bed, the first thing. So we want to get those small things right. Discipline, the neatness of the school, and then we'll take it from there. We are going to protect our schools from vandalism, cancel. Uh, I know Una Lidito is somewhere around here, and I can't deny. We have, uh, I had stories when I left here in uh, January. Arfa Zobula School, or uh, there were stories of somebody, a Torzenata, a chair of the SGB, could go to the center bees. That's in Tabisa, but obviously we had faith and commitment in the school uh, about the, the first commitment we made that we'll make an SOS and we kept to it, uh, but also to say we had faith that the school leadership knows what is happening and they're, they're fixing it. We know that there's people or members of the community who see a school as an opportunity to take something, especially Bonyaupe and others. And mind you, drugs are the number one thing that I hate the most. And we must always keep away from drugs. Nothing ever comes out of taking drugs. Nothing. But keep away from drugs. Keep away from drugs. Keep away from alcohol. Keep away from alcohol. I saw a video of Elena drinking Savannah. Just show me the school. Apparently, it's in another province. In class. Keep away from Savannah. Keep away from whatever. Keep away from alcohol. Keep away from drugs and keep away from uh, the funny things of relationships. school. school. So keep away from those things. So this, in protecting our schools, we are intensifying. We can't give up our schools, uh, principal, SGB chair and the councillor. We will be putting, we have identified schools I don't know if Mapenan is one of the schools, but I don't think so. It's not one of our problematic schools, that's good. But we have schools where, you know about those schools, there's a problem of gangsterism, there's a problem of school violence, there's a problem of vandalism. Those schools, we are entering those schools, we are going to be fixing them. We are going to put security guards, we've already done it, by the way. We did a pilot in an area in Johannesburg South District in a school called Kalabucha. Mola no le raf mola. Dwai no le raf ba na just they will come in, gangsters will just walk in and out. I can tell you now, Kalabucha is nice. Humu nadi ba na humu nadi. How now ba na ba schoolo? We are so happy. The teachers are teaching, everybody's safe. They used to steal, some community members used to connect electricity to the school, school uh, power supply, both electricity, uh, we cut it. Uh, we cut it, they must go to the council or go somewhere and find electricity, not in our schools. So we have secured our school, we have pulled out the learners who are bullies, we have get rid of gangsterism, and amongst that, Banabal Rebasecha every day. The first day they thought we were playing. They saw Rikikena second day. They realized, no, we can't bring these things. So now they know. We search them every day. We check. Now the kids are even doing their homeworks. I can't wait to see their, their third term results. I'm sure we're going to see an improvement in that school. And those schools who have identified them in Houting, there are 75 of them out of 2,000. So it's not a crisis. Mara, we are nipping it in the bud before it's all delayed. So there are 75 schools like that that we are going to ensure that we fix them. 
So this is how far we're going to ensure that we protect our learners, we protect our school infrastructure, and we protect even the, the educators and everyone in the school. That goes over and above uh, the e panic buttons that the provincial government will be providing to our schools. Uh, in fact, the e panic buttons are going to go to all our township schools. Uh, so all our educators in township schools, you are going to be the first to receive that e panic button. Uh, so that when there's a problem, so we are giving them e panic buttons. We are making sure that our educators are able to press it and get the necessary help. Because the, the wardens, with their 6,000, they are deployed in our township communities. We have given them cars. We have given them cars. We have given them BMW. We have given Corona. We gave them BMW so that they can be quick uh, to arrive to the sea. We gave them BMWs. And we further even gave police stations 400 cars. And we have given them van. How do you feel there is no car? So we have given them 400 cars as a provincial government into our police stations to aid them so that when the teacher presses the panic button in the school, they are quick to arrive. And that's over and above the security guards that were deploying. We're looking to deploy 1,400 security guards in those schools that are giving us problems. So it's a big number. You're counting above 10 plus per school and 5,000 5, patrollers that we are deploying. So we are putting everything into our schools so that we protect our schools. Kuru are going back. You know, we took a decision uh, with the EMT that let's take a step back. Uh, you know, we are going forward, but we had to pause and move back and say what is really going on? You know, why is so much school violence? Uh, so I know there are still splinters there and there are on social media, but that is few. There'll be a lot more silence. Kikena uh, Winterfeld, I know Winterfeld about Sweden. I'm entering Winterfeld. It's one of the areas that we're entering to fix it. So this is how much we're investing in school safety. And that's over and above. We know that uh, our learners are going through a lot. Uh, in your language, uh, in the youthful language, Baradar Guning. Guning, Bandonavamias, Guning. So we, we will be deploying to you social workers, counselors. Uh, meanwhile, we are dealing with our idea of bringing back, uh, what do you call, uh, is it career guidance? Uh, guidance counselors. Because we used to have guidance counselors in schools. So district directors, we are going to go into that particular direction of getting guidance counselors into our schools so that they are able to assist our children. So we, we are doing everything possible so that we don't lose anyone. So everything we are doing is to make sure that this talent that you saw today and that is sitting at the back might not, you have not seen it today, we are protecting it. Because here we are protecting our future. But for you learners, there's a challenge that I want from you. Uh, SOS is like I said, it's the Ivy League. Uh, I hope this, they don't quote me. All schools are UEFA Champions League in Gauteng. But obviously, remember only the preliminary round. And then there's a, the league, and then there's a quarter final and final. SOS is a competition every year. And it's tough. It's not easy. It's not an ordinary science fair. I know you can assume it's a science fair, no. no. It's tough. We want you to think out of the box. I said to you, learners of Ketis and Kondo did a machine. And I was there, Kikeni, Kamaram Chino. That machine was able to tell my, my blood pressure rate. You know, so you don't need nurses anymore. Nurses, like, uh, nurses carry us under threat by that machine. Designed by learners. In high school. 
in Soweto. Yeah? In a township in Soweto. It hits your heart rate, hits your blood pressure. If you are struggling to breathe, it can read that no, you are struggling to breathe. If you are, you are hot, like I said, those cameras, it's able to say this one, the temperature is high. That's the machine. And that machine, once they are done, those learners, they can deploy it in hospitals. So no longer that you enter into a hospital, you wait for a nurse. Once you pass there, there's a report that goes right into the, to the nurse and the doctor that this patient passed, this is the vitals, this is the report from the vitals that we have got him. And that's what we want. So that competition is coming for you towards the end of the year. So there's pressure, I can't say there's no pressure. There's pressure, so you must think out of the box. As you know, uh, social Google source, they said I must always say source, uh, social Google source, uh, school of specialization. Last year they won a gold medal in this FISO robotics soccer challenge. Oh, this year. This year they won a FISO robotics soccer challenge in May. Last year they've been going across the world. They won an award in Sassol, the best award. They've been to Dubai, is it Dubai, Qatar, Germany, all over. These learners, they did a, a, a solar powered locomotive. I'm sure you saw in the news. So they're resolving the train issue. Uh, and this is what we mean solving problems. The only problem of people cutting wires uh, on our trains. So these learners said, no, he said, it doesn't matter even if you cut a wire, the train will go. Because Africa is going to sign. So they worked on that commodity and they built a solar power train. I was inside and they did it themselves. And you know the beauty about it? You, you, they recorded the whole process from start to finish. They played a video so that even those who don't believe in the talent that we have in the townships, they could see how they started and how they finished. Uh, amongst other things, and in your car, you to a principal spinner, a spinner, please. We are not producing uh, drifters or otherwise, we are producing scientists, professors, doctors. Um, uh, the boys from Pace. A commercial Entrepreneurship School of Specialization. They also had a program where they went on a cycling endeavor tour for 700 k's. And these are opportunities that come to source schools. The top 10 performing grade 10 learners from Mutholi, they visited Simon's Town, Simon's Town, to learn. Mutholi has uh, got a focus on maritime. And uh, so we, we took them to, to, uh, to Simon's Town. Amongst others, they were able to mini, meet the Minister of Women and Youth, uh, Dr. Kosazana Zuma, spend time with her and, and so forth. So these are some of the things that are there. The under 15 netball learners from Skulegile, uh, we took them, they went to Cape Town now. Uh, to watch the Netball World Cup, uh, the, to watch the World, World, Netball World Cup, and also spend time with the South African team, and I'm sure you saw them with the Premier as well, was with them, and we took, there were different groups as well. So these are some of the things that we're doing to get our learners to inspire them in our source schools. Because, the, you know, I, I've learned this thing, that if traveling opens your mind, Traveling opens your mind. Uh, and that's what we're doing when we take them in exposure. Because when, what we do, we are exposing them. So if you expose them, you open their mind to the infinite possibilities. And that's what we want. That's actually the key of source, is to open their mind, principal, to the infinite possibilities that are out there. So, so this is what we're doing with our, with our learners. And also many others, they've done many inventions. Uh, I can speak about Kachong Source, I can speak about many. All these source schools, they've done it. Johannesburg, UJ, 
uh, source as well. They've done a lot of innovations, robotics, all these innovations, they are done by learners like yourselves. Not somebody in America, not some professor or university student, you, learners of Mapenan, yourselves, Takatsaluna, in schools, in township, they're doing all these things. So you can do it as well. Can't you? You can do it, ne? Maragilu, you can do it. I am expecting Vix here. So, this is what we are resolving as government, as the current government. We are resolving this issue that when a child is from a township, their progress is limited. Uh, we are not producing, and in fact, we don't aim to produce. If you decide to, to be a job seeker, it's up to you. But our goal now, as the Houghton Department of Education, is that we want to produce job creators. That is our goal. You heard the professor was speaking about solving problems. Uh, to simplify it, you know, to make money, to be rich, to be somebody, all you have to do is to solve the problem of the person next to you. If you solve what they need, they pay you for it. It's as simple as that. You create jobs and you feed yourself. That's why we also have this multi-certification program. And the most important part, uh, DDG Edison and HOD, the entrepreneurship aspect, I want all our learners to get it right there. So that when they leave, they know that even if I'm studying to be an engineer, I don't need to go to uh, find a job at an engineering firm. I can also start my own business and start a, an engineering company. I can do this, I can do that, you know. And this is what we want to do. Uh, within the multi-certification, with all the skills that we are going to be providing. Because when we go forward, we want to provide skills from grade one until grade 12. Every learner get a particular skill uh, from every single grade. Whether it's a technical vocational skill, etc., we need to give you that particular space. So we are also doing that to solve this thing. Because we don't want to produce uh, job seekers. I don't want job seekers anymore. That's not our goal. Because if you look at the countries like um, Germany, China, Japan, in fact, let me give you an example of Japan, because I've also been there, and I was able to see it firsthand. In Japan, they have a Toyota. You know Toyota, the big company, the mother company. Now, Toyota is a big global player. So what Toyota did to boost the Japanese economy, it then encouraged SMEs. One SME produces the bolt and nuts, one produces tires, one produces rims, one produces, so they just have an assembly point. You know, they just build a plant to assemble every product that comes from the SMEs. So every time you buy a Toyota, you, f you are actually don't realize that you are, you are, you are just creating jobs in, uh, in Japan. That's why Japan has got almost, in fact, it doesn't have unemployment. They first started there. When they realized they were growing too big, they expanded to other countries. Like we're seeing them in uh, East London and, and also in other countries where they've set up plants. But the, the components that build that Toyota are done by small businesses in Japan, whether it's a screw, screw or it's a bolt or it's a nut or it's what, it's done there in Japan, put on ships, brought to East London, we just, uh, we just assemble it and put it in the street. That's what it does. That's, what, that's how they build their, their, their economy. They did it with their big companies, Sony, Panasonic, Daihatsu, uh, you name them. Every single, and that's what they did. And they further, actually, going to South Korea. I'm giving you all these examples of how economies grow. 
South Korea, if you know Samsung, uh, Samsung was a, it used to build a Sony TVs. That's how Samsung came about. Because Japan had so much capacity. Uh, remember the Sony Bravia TVs? They were very popular in the world. And Japan could not produce enough. So they did outsource manufacturing of certain components into South Korea because they are neighbors. So Samsung started building for, uh, for, for, for Sony. But after a while, they said, no man, we can build our own TV. The very same technology, but we'll just maybe move the chip from here to here and say we didn't, uh, what do you call this? Uh, it's a plagiarized or something. Intelli Inclusion, intellectual property. That's what they did. They moved one chip to there and they produced Sony TVs. I mean, Samsung TVs. And when people, the market responded positively to Samsung. But by that time, because that's what you want Houting to do. By that time, those uh, Samsung uh, uh, institutional leadership were able to say, now we have a market. Where, where Sony said, go and deliver TVs at Hi-Fi Corporation, they send their rep, go and give them also this TV. So they began to encroach on the market of Sony. But where's Sony TVs now? They're gone. But we have Samsung. But this leadership and this innovation, and that's what we want you to do. There's nothing wrong. And that's how Huawei started as well. By the way, uh, Huawei was selling uh, what is this? Is it printers? There's a, there's a, I'll tell you. They used to sell, but they used to buy these printers from, from Taiwan. So they'll buy it from Taiwan and sell in China. You know, and when, when this company in Taiwan realized you know, who is making money, by that time it was too late. So they already done the technology to build these electronic equipments for themselves. So when this company cut, they continue to roll out. And that's how, the, 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 that's how Chinese and all these companies are able to make it. But we want yourself to be at that level of thinking. That sometimes you might not innovate, but you can come in and plug yourself and improve on those particular innovation. But that's, that's for you. Like I said earlier, that we are planting a tree that we might not sit, we will not sit under. But you would have taken our province to another level. Uh, as I conclude, as I conclude, it's uh, safe to say that uh, Mapenane, we are expecting the most from yourselves. And, and I know for a fact, take it from me, we didn't make a mistake by making you an SOS. We made you an SOS because of your results as well. Don't undermine that you got 94. And say because you got 94, therefore you can, 94 brought you the school of specialization. That's what you must know. 94 brought you that particular SOS. Uh, uh, tech uh, principal, and I know that you have done well. I'm told that the matriculants are sitting at 96 percent. So those who have failed, work on them. I want 100 percent, and I know we'll get 100 percent from you. Our SOS schools must give us 100 percent. They know all the principals. I'm clear because SOS are giving more support. Uh, um, I know, have you gazetted them already? We're in the process of gazetting. After gazetting, obviously you get additional support. And that additional support means additional responsibility, chair of the SGB, and it means pressure to deliver. Uh, most people, learners are moving from former Model C schools that are coming to our township schools. And that is a sign of success that we have done as this government. Because when we were young, we were told that better education equal to home. But I can tell you now, schools, even white learners, are moving. They're in Kakle Home School. We've got a school with white learners. They have left all Boxburg, all these schools that historically people believed were better, all the way into Kakle Home. 
because our township schools are producing good quality education. And that is an achievement that we have done in this government. And we are proud of that thing. So here we go to Chapel Amatoho. Here we go to Kim Selezomu. Kim Selezomu that we have done as this, as this government since we've taken over. So therefore, as I always conclude in this manner, that it's befitting to declare Mapenani Math, Science and ICT School of Specialization with a focus on research and innovation officially launched. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, MEC. Ladies and gentlemen, I think let's give MEC another round of applause. <laughs> MEC, you have said a mouthful, and your message is well received, very uh, appropriate uh, for sharing with us your keynote address, which addresses us as employees of the department, as parents, as school, as community, and as learners. And we believe that this 25th uh, School of Specialization, Mapenani School of Specialization, is duly launched. And I believe, MEC, that this particular school won't disappoint you come with results results uh, announcement in January. Uh, we believe that uh, this school won't also have challenges in terms of school safety, uh, they will deliver as per your mandate and as per the guidance you gave us regarding school safety tips uh, and also in terms of your demand for 100% they will uh, surely uh, deliver. But to ensure that we, we thank you appropriately, MEC, and uh, in line with the protocol, I would like to call upon Mayor Molele, our SGB chairperson, in the Mapenani Schools of Specialization to do a vote of things and also to thank you for, 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 the, for the address. Uh, as Mem Malele is coming to the stage, I also want to indicate, let me see, that one day, and one day is one day, it might be next year or two years to come. Kumbis which are going to town, taking Harangua people to, to so-called better, better schools in town or in Pretoria North are going to be bringing learners from those suburbs to this particular school. <laughs> Namalele is still coming, uh, AGP chairperson, as she comes, I want to hand over to her, but uh, I was uh, prepared that if she takes more time, I can continue talking and talking and talking forever. But she's here. Memulele, over to you. Uh, thank you, Program Director. Karata Holeba Habatswadi, Ereke Tomega, who do you make this appeal? Kidimu says it's what he says, Limfa Bana, Bagdabana, the Prince Bala, eh, Bahisani. Bobo Shiba Valentim Kerudi Melamba Hall. It has been such an honor to be part of this wonderful event. On behalf of the SGB and the school, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest, uh, MEC, Mr. Matome Chilwani, HOD. MPL Education Chairperson, Councillor, Union Representative, Nehau, Neptosa, Natu Kosatu, Chairperson, Secretary, Chairperson and Secretary, Satu Chairperson and Secretary, ANC Brand Chairperson and Secretary, Professor Sijin Gasali from Future Nation School, the GDE Agency CEO, DDGS Chief Director and District Directors, SOS School Representative, Principal SGB Chair and RCL, 
school of training program represented by principals, uh, the stakeholders. Uh, our special guest, Old Mutual Richfield, Sifako Makhatu Health Science University, Optumi, Vele, Malanensian, Midgood, Swan University Technology Learners Project. Give us a little bit of a Saibono Discovery Center, FNB Bank, Blue Sky Frontline, Italian School of Blinds, Hohund, Les Gafelapin, Bukamuso Foundation, uh, Funda Africa, Kelewohele Professor Mamukheti Page, Ward Councillor Palwani, eh, Mapodisa Namo Harankua, Matogomedi Barona, Galeleboha, the Principal, Neighboring Schools, Secondary Schools, Department of Health. But we are going to go to the hospital. 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 We are going to go to so the whole area of life is there. The whole family will never be able to do it. Rescara boifa. Talent is in Timo Mapenan. Naga proud. I'm proud of our learners. Look, let's pass and sit off. I'll go to the other cabana of Amor and Club Mapenan. You're more moving. How do you know how to The, the people who are helping us to prepare for this event, the Ross team, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Peter, uh, the district, Mr. Herman, director, but why don't you tell me how to do this? Kile mo hama ti chararu na muskolo. Erekiri, to be a teacher is not a teacher; it's a calling. Kipi ito ya horon na murutaba na hamu murutaba na fair. Labo na moli fiti le montengwa bona hara. Kero na uliske la inyata. Korka tasi le moto nui peta maheda ora I'm a teacher. Wa ito ro o. Oh, this is a child. Ah, this is a talent in Africa. Who is the principal of our school? My mom said. Who is the principal of our school? Who is the principal of our school? Thank you. I need to adjust this thing for obvious reasons. 
I don't have to explain. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, Mulele, uh, really, you are our governor for this school, and we, we normally say leadership starts with governance. program director Agar principal ba midi se bar atle mope asawa na me la stagei abu afel la kutla siku. So now with a little bit of authority, which I'm heavy, I'm saying fili wana kya musamwa na to the stage. Thank you very much, principal Rale Boha. Uh, where's the program director? This young boy, I normally when I co program direct with a young uh, learners, I adopt them and I become their mentor. Therefore, today I'm declaring that the mentor wa mohela. He's, he's at grade 9, we're going to track him until I feel like grade 12 uh, under my mentorship. Therefore, he can mail the exchange the, the, the numbers. And I want to give him this book, which is written, It is not how good you are, it is how good you want to be. Yeah. It's, written by, it's written by Paul Aiden. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I agree we are educators. Most of my materials are my and then uh, the marvel of having a book is that you can read it in your bed, in your car, in your taxi, etc. You can smell it, you can touch it, you can make marks on it, unlike reading on a, on a cell phone. Therefore, this young boy, I'm, I'm pushing to read all the time. Make sure that you read one book a week and you'll be great. Our school governors live on Rabarat and we, 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 we leave the governance of school in their hands. But they also need to be informed, be learned, read, be knowledgeable, and be alert and know their responsibilities. So I've got a book here for, for Me Warona Me Molele, uh, SGB chairperson. It's, it's titled School Governance, Common Issues and How to Deal with Them, written by Jacob Deacon. And the principal, because he's a, he's a manager, he's a, in fact, principals are HODs at school level. All the functions which the HOD is having at head office level, to, my, to some extent, they cascade to the principal at the school level. He's the CEO of the school. And this one is the chairperson of the board of the school. That was the CEO of the school, he's an, she's an executive. And I thought maybe we need to have a book uh, which is relevant to her. And it's it titled, Present your way to the top, executive secrets to help you stand out when you step up, inspire any uh, audience, and master Q&A, written by David Dimsey, for her to read. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I want to allow my co-program director to say closing remarks and then thereafter I'll do some final announcements. Thank you. Uh, now ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of our main program for the day. And I would like to hand over to MECs Ashas, Motewo, I mean, yes, Motewo and Oradile to take you on the projects to talk about. But before you go, I would like to thank you, MEC, DDGs, directors, SGB, principals, learner guests from other schools, and teachers, including parents, for the support, time, and presence that you gave us. Without you, the event wouldn't have been a success. We truly honor you and we respect you for what you did for us today. Thank you. And before I go far, I would like to also thank the Zondi group, the people who are giving us discipline and are helping us with the school order. The Zondi, I'm not sure if they are here, but if they are, we thank you for what you are doing and may you please continue. And many people were saying, someone could, mamang could, and then I could. I'm Helen Sishibedi. 
Dynamite comes in small packages, just like our principal. She's small, but she's a dynamite. Thank you, Mimsi. Thank you very much, Amokalang Amu. Uh, you're my son now. From today, tell your parents that you've got a second dad. Um, we, are, we are coming to an end now. Uh, what we are going to do, we'll allow MECs and the entourage to do a walkabout of all the uh, sponsors and learner displays. Uh, but before we do that, uh, all the other people who are not part of the MECs entourage can go and eat. We know Akere Majidaka Da, Le Majidaka Nkela, Le Diamond. And the announcement are as follows in terms of refreshments. We want all staff members, principal, SGB, MEC, uh, and directors and chief directors to come on stage for a photo with the MEC before we do the, the hog about, please as the choir will be leading us in that melodic presentation as they were doing when we come in. Come on stage, uh, please, all the staff members and district officials. Learners of Mapenani, SOS must remain in the hall. <laughs> 